the next speaker I am particularly pleased and uh, impressed to see here. Um, he is representing a company called VNC, Real VNC, who are members of the uh, Connected Car, Car Connectivity Consortium. Um, it is not even an open secret, it's, it's, it's a very um, a, a known fact that we need standards, we need, we need harmonization, and without, without joining forces, driving that innovation from the technology perspective will never result in the real frameworks in the ecosystem that has to be there to actually absorb them and to make things happen. Uh, the, our next guest is Alberto Bonamico, who is a mobile wireless veteran with over 20 years experience in mobile and embedded industry, having worked for companies like ARM, C CSR, and TTP.com, which was acquired by Motorola in 2006. Um, he is, um, as I mentioned, part of the um, Car Connectivity Consortium, as well as running strategic partnerships management for the mobile and automotive division for RealVNC. Alberto is going to talk to us about where the smartphone meets the dashboard. Please welcome Alberto Bonamico. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, muchas gracias por la hospitalidad. Um, so as um, Ilona Explain. I'm here on behalf of the CCC, uh, the Car Connectivity Consortium, and today I would like to talk about um, a new, well, it's not so much a new concept, but something that the CCC is doing around uh, digital key. So, uh, so what is the CCC? Maybe some of you know, some of you don't know. So the CCC is a consortium made of uh, mobile manufacturers, so some of them are listed here, so Xiaomi, LG, HTC, Huawei that recently announced um, uh, Miralink support as well, and Samsung, of course, uh, so top, top three mobile OEMs in the world all listed there. And then we have uh, all the tier ones. This is not an exhaustive uh, list of, of them, but uh, some of the biggest ones. Um, of course, we have lots of cars, uh, OEMs that are supporting, have been uh, members of uh, the CCC. So all the largest ones are in there. In fact, if you, if you go to the SEAT stand, you would be able to, to, to see Miralink in action. And this is the only reference I'm going to make to VNC. Um, so VNC is a core member of the CCC. Uh, we, um, we've been involved uh, from the very, very beginning um, because also Miralink is based on um, a uh, part of our uh, intellectual property is called VNC protocol, which, is, uh, which allows you to screen the phone into the car and see the applications there. So as you can see, it's a very comprehensive list of um, key players in the automotive and mobile uh, space. So what do we do? Um, well, we do the simple concept of, here's my phone, here's my car, let's connect them and use the applications that I have in my phone, in my everyday phone, let's use them in my car. Um, this, in fact, has been widely used and is in more than 30 million cars uh, and hundreds of millions of phones. So what, is the, what are the baselines? Well, uh, fundamentally, it's, uh, these, these came from uh, the, the automotive OEM's requirement to have, yes, the application you have in your phone, but safely. Uh, safety comes first in, when driving. So basically, it's OK to use navigation apps or play your music. It's not so OK to play Angry Birds while you drive. So this, this all standard is really based on uh, ensuring that safety and security and drive distractions are um, protected. And there are um, a huge amount of, uh, there's a huge amount of paperwork and um, legal stuff has been done around this, so um, it's very, very detailed. So this is an example, of course, in, in a car, 
the, the key app, or as they call it, the killer app, is definitely uh, navigation. So there are different types of navigation uh, um, apps that are available. Um, and they all uh, follow very simple rules, which are um, very high contrast, uh, big buttons, um, big fonts, high contrast. So all the stuff that makes using a uh, big display in a car easy to read. And we, as the CCC, we also done a lot of work in um, standardizing the interface for uh, media applications. So um, rather than getting each application to be uh, mirror link compatible, uh, we have created a, a single interface that applies to all the applications. So you, by installing the application in your phone, you can then use Spotify as these are. Um, using that, um, that um, say, say, same interface that changes accordingly to the application you're actually using in the background. So the, the orange dot you see there when you use Spotify becomes green. But the point being that is, um, is a simple interface that is easy to use and, uh, and is safe to use when driving. Okay, that's, that's the MirrorLink stuff, but the CCC is uh, not just MirrorLink, it's also about standardization. So this is the same drive we had from uh, the beginning to integrate cars, application, uh, cars and applications together. Um, also applies to something that has been um, discussed. Um, so there are a lot of services that are going in, uh, additional services for um, more complex telematics data, um, additional services based on turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation, so using multiple displays and uh, other features like um, hardware acceleration, so uh, to improve the, uh, the user experience. Um, and of course, this is an open standard, and uh, being an open standard is also being uh, ratified by Etsy. So this is very important because uh, one of the key requirements in automotive uh, typically is that um, OEMs are comfortable working on uh, with open standards because they're open. Nobody can change them overnight. Uh, they don't belong to any particular party. Uh, they are open to suggesting improvements. Uh, but most importantly, the, the standard we put in a car today will still be applicable in 10 years' time. Uh, or at least it will be backwards compatible. Okay, so th what is the new, the new big thing in town? Is, let's talk about digital key. Um, for those of you that were in, in the audience this morning, there were a lot of the interesting discussions about how can we um, rent or borrow a car um, using a smartphone. So there are the different implementation, all very interesting. Um, but the, this is not a new concept, absolutely not. It's actually, this starts back in the um, 90s when uh, Siemens in, came up with the idea of replacing the, the key with a radio key. Um, it went, it's been a massive success. In fact, I think every one of us has a radio control key in, uh, in our cars. Um, and the key, the key features are, of course, um, open, close car, uh, the, the, the doors and the, the boot, um, uh, uh, alarm, and all sorts of fe features that are very common. For the, the, the most sophisticated ones, actually, when you plug in the, the key in your car, that actually has additional features like uh, m storing memory of your uh, particular setup, the mirror position, because um, clearly uh, I might be a lot taller than the, my wife or, or the other way around. And um, so the, the distance between the, 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 for the seat and the mirrors has to be really there. So and clearly the trans, trans, uh, transition is about uh, moving away from the key, the physical key, into a digital key. Um, it's obvious that uh, everyone these days has a smartphone in their pocket. Uh, I've actually bumped into someone the other day who does not have a smartphone, and it was a bit of a you know, <laughs> moment of surprise. But of course, um, there are uh, all sorts of different devices that can be used, so the uh, phones or um, other gadgets. 
fundamentally, what we have here is the fact that the phone is the most personal device we have in our lives. Um, I'm sh if I asked how many of you would go back uh, if they forgot the wallet, uh, the answer would be probably, you know, if, the, if you leave your house without your wallet, you probably say, well, I can probably live without my wallet for a day. But if you forget your smartphone, 100% will most likely say, no, I need to go back home and, and pick it up because that's all I have. So this is, this is where we're coming from. And this is a, <clears throat> uh, a sort of global uh, proposition because it involves security in, in the cloud and, uh, of course, profiling drivers. Well, there were interesting questions about how we go about insurance. Uh, so, of course, if I lend you my car, whose who's, uh, different countries have different legislation. So if I'm in Italy, I can lend you my car and the car will be insured. If I'm in the UK, I'm actually insured as a person, not, I'm not insuring my car. So I wouldn't be able to lend you my car the way I do in, in Italy. So these are very complex issues. Um, so that's where we, you know, the, the, we want to use uh, ideas about how to use the phone to recognize my identity and uh, with that my insurance policy. So clearly one of the classic ones is I use the, my phone proximity, so I carry the phone with me. The, the, um, the assumption is that it's, it is me carrying that phone and I can, um, I can confirm it's me because my, my car is, um, has a sensor that can uh, read my finger uh, print. That's the case. Um, of course, we can also have the fingerprint on the phone, so the, the car doesn't need to have a, uh, that sort of uh, two-step verification. It just needs to be uh, the phone. The phone is all I need. Um, it has advantages and disadvantages. Or there's the, op the option of uh, the phone is actually the key, so I have to have the phone near the NFC um, um, component in the car so that then I can press my uh, start and stop button. There are different approaches, but fundamentally what we need here is a, um, a clear definition of the standard, uh, how we have something that makes all the OEMs happy about using this technology and working with the mobile OEMs. So this is, we're talking about bringing together two very different industries. Automotive OEM has very long-term requirements, and mobile OEMs have very short-term requirements. Just, just imagine how things have changed in the last six years, where six years ago, Nokia was the um, top-selling uh, mobile manufacturer in the world, and I'm with uh, almost 40% of the market. Five years later, Nokia doesn't exist anymore, and uh, we have a raft of... Uh, uh, big Chinese OEMs. Uh, Huawei was a small company. Samsung was a very small company <laughs> 10 years ago. So this, this changes very rapidly. So that's why the standard standardization is really, really important. And of course, there's one, once I'm in the car, I can start my, start my car because my phone is my key. So these, these are, again, this is, we're not in reinventing the wheel. We are using the, what we hope are the uh, good and smart things about what other, many smart people have done in the past. Um, so this is all done by fundamentally using a standard, which is the Thatcham standard, something that has been developed in the UK. The UK is quite advanced in uh, um, this sort of um, uh, research. And of course, um, it depends on low-frequency, low-power devices. So that's why NFC is one of them, but there's also Bluetooth or Zigbee. So these, these devices that can uh, last weeks, if not months, if not years, on a single battery. Um, uh, and and um, you know, cause of course, the last thing you want is to not be able to open your car because <laughs> your battery is run down. Um, so there you go. So we, this is really um, where the, the whole industry is really adapting to the new model. Um, the, there's a trend clearly that the uh, car ownership is converting into um, sort of a car sharing. So this means that um, the automotive OEM needs to have a very simple and effective way of um, when I rent or lease or buy the car, give me a key that I can use in my phone. But 
this is this is where the phone is is in a is a very uh, vague object uh, when put in an automotive context because um, I need this requirement for, as an automotive OEM now and for the next 20 years. Uh, now I, I don't think anyone in Apple or in even Google Android knows what the, the Android operating system or the iOS operating system will be in 20 years time. Nobody knows. But this is a, the first question we get asked when we talk to automotive OEMs, saying, can you guarantee that this will work in 20 years' time? And then, and hence, once more, we need the standard. So this standard will stay in there and is agreed and approved by everyone. But of course, this is, you know, this is a, a great opportunity for uh, business, op opportunity uh, where there's a challenge, there's an opportunity, of course. And um, we can... Uh, um, this makes you know, the automotive business future-proof, uh, particularly in the case where, uh, you know, depending how what you read, but there's clearly autonomous cars are very near into. They're already in production. You can already buy cars that can drive themselves. So the next step is uh, with autonomous cars. Really, I don't need to buy the car. I just need to call the car, deliver the, the car shows up at my doorstep. I use my phone to. Uh, use the car, and then I leave the car wherever I need to. Um, and this, this can help in a speci specific use case. Um, <clears throat> so, in uh, conclusion, this is really a reinterpreting, making, trying to converge technologies and in the industries that are very far apart and by the mean of a uh, standard. The standard is something that <clears throat> uh, all, uh, anyone can, can contribute to. So the CCC is, a, is, a, is open to uh, members, so you can uh, uh, become a member. There are different level, level of memberships. And this allows you to discuss and uh, draft and ratify these uh, standards uh, actively. So you know, if you want to know more, please come and talk to me after the presentation. And um, with this, I would like to thank you again for your uh, interest. And um, if you have any questions, um, I think we have three minutes for questions. Questions? Yes, please. Hi. Um, just a question. Um, I, I don't know how, how you pro will protect the, the systems to avoid, uh, mm, to avoid attacks, attacks from hackers or something like that. For example, if you have to open your car with your telephone or your mobile and someone can uh, attack your, your system and can stole your, your car or something like that. Oh, thank you. There are many clever, clever questions buried in that question. So, um, yes, the, certainly uh, security is very important. Um, it's actually, it's, uh, in, uh, in the UK, you pay more for your insurance premium uh, if you tell the insurance company that you uh, park your car in your driveway. Um, this is because it's very well documented that you know, if, uh, if a car is a, a thief wants to um, steal your car, then they will sit there in front of your house, wait for you to go home, lock your car, intercept the RF, you know, the, RF the, the frequency you're using to lock your car, and then clone it, and then they will drive away with your car uh, as you go to sleep. It's the, it's the quickest way for them to steal your car. This, this, is, this is where all this discussion comes from. Uh, is, um, this is based on, uh, you know, you, if you did that, then you need to also have a clone of the smartphone with your identity, with your security in the, uh, in the smartphone. So it would be a lot more difficult. And we, you know, uh, I'm, I'm an ex-engineer, so I, I start from the fact that, you know, whatever you, you do, there's always some other much smarter engineer able to 
figure out a way to um, unlock your car. And this, this has been uh, demonstrated very easily a couple of years ago when uh, all the hackers had to do was to find the IP address of the car. It was a, I think it was a Jeep that went, was uh, driven into a ditch. Uh, remotely controlled. Uh, so this is where the automotive industry is definitely catching up. But in, this, in, this, in the context of a digital key, there's, there are a number of steps that are validating and verifying that it's you, it's your car, and, and the person, and the, if the car is moving, is because it's, you know, it's, it's allowed to move. Um, hopefully this cover your question. I also think there's an element of um, security. So um, the ones of you who are familiar with the Rolls-Royce and Mini brands, um, there was a very prominent case where a number of people had a number of sleepless nights. You could actually open your Rolls-Royce, and it was not a sophisticated engineer, it was a kid with a 29 US dollar software. Yeah. So the paradigm, we certainly see that shift of the paradigm where the hackers are not sat somewhere with engineering degrees where it's about how do you use it. Yes. And I think one of the advantages, again, as I understood from your presentation mm. and from, um, from the digital key is that there are layers of security in there. So usually what, what, what cyber security incidents in the car industry uh, will be hacking through, finding this least secure path. Absolutely, which is and, and, and so. uh, things like mirroring, for instance, are uh, the idea is that you never install an application in the car head unit. You always use the application that is in the phone. So by doing so, the software is in the head unit in the car is never uh, modified, which is the fundamental <laughs> uh, requirement for uh, preventing hackers. So if you don't let anything install, then you don't open any, any back doors to the uh, potential malware. Um, and this is where um, standards like um, CarPlay, under Auto, Baidu Car Life, MirrorLink, and many more are, sim are based on the fact that A, you run the application on the phone and you just see the screen of the phone in your car. Uh, and two, by not in, in installing an application in the car, there's actually a massive cost saving exercise because porting an application in an embedded environment is, is, a, very, is a very long and expensive engineering um, cost. Uh, this is where, you know, the, and the third benefit is, of course, that uh, our, we are used to our, the applications we use every day, and, um, which means that when I put this application in my screen, I don't need to relearn a new UI, and hopefully the automotive guys next door won't be too upset when I say this, but because of the development cycle is so long, um, the, the, the excellent design that was thought of maybe three, four years ago, once it goes into production, it looks very old and obsolete and awkward to use. And some great cars have poor experience because the user interface in the head unit is actually very poor. Um, and this is, this is one of the solutions. So, and in fact, my background is mobile, and I'm seeing the automotive industry accelerating exactly in the same way, where the, um, the, the four or five years uh, cycle that we used to see in the past is now accelerating into maybe two, three years, which is still long, but half, half the, um, twice the pace we, we used to have in the past, which makes more technology flow into, the, into cars more quickly. So there's a lot more software in cars today than there was three years ago, that's for sure. Alberto, thank you very much. Thank you. Big thank you. Thank you.